The hunt for the next professional MasterChef champion is back on. And these six chefs all believe they have what it takes to win the title. Today, they face two challenges set by Judge Greg Wallace and two of Britain's best chefs, Monica Galletti and Michelin starred Marcus Waring. At the end of the day, it's a competition, and I'm not here to make the numbers up. Yeah, I'm excited to be here, more than anything, to show your skills, and hopefully I don't mess up. Every year, this is a roller coaster journey, and I'm sure this year is going to be no exception. This is so exciting. Who is going to be our next star? Right, it's a skills test. I love this, but I think I love this more than the contestants do. Monica, what are you going to get the chefs to do? Today, I would like our chefs to serve us a T-bone of place with a sauce vierge. What's a sauce vierge? It's tomatoes, olive oil, basil and lemon juice. How long are you going to give them for this? 15 minutes. This could be really interesting. Go on, chef. Show All me. Right. Just going to trim off the sides, you can see. Comes off very easy. Tail off as well. Check the insides. Going to just straight through and remove the head. So I don't know what a T-bone is. If you can imagine a steak yeah. when you've got a T-bone, you've got the bone that goes across on the top, so you've got, in fact, a, a T. I don't through. think I've ever seen that on a flat fish. I don't uh, think I'm sure you would have. Do you think so? I have. Yeah, I'm sure you have, Chef. Yeah, yeah I'm, sure, I'm sure you have. <laughs> so what you can see here is a natural line that's marking the spine of the fish. Helps you with a knife just to follow that line through. If you've turned the fish over, a very transparent line that runs along the, the belly side as well, and you should cut down straight on it. So you're just going to go along that backbone. The key thing here is how they're going to cut this fish up. What does that T-bone look like? It's going to be really interesting to see how our chefs approach that fish. I'm just going to then cut down so you can see then where the bone runs across. OK, so it's quite straightforward. I'm not too sure. I wonder if we'll see any of our chefs cook that whole... You think? <laughs> Don't do that, you scare me. I'm just seasoning my fish with a bit of salt, olive oil, and then go straight on a very hot grill pan. So while the fish is cooking, I'm going to make my sauce verge. Sauce verge is made from tomatoes, basil, lemon juice, and olive oil. So I'm just de-seeding these tomatoes and just removing the skin as well. There's no cooking here, so this is a pure question of taste buds. You could go wrong in the seasoning and the finishing of the sauce, uh, the balance of the lemon juice, for example, and then the salt at the end, especially when they get nervous and they forget to taste. So basil. That fish has taken longer than I thought. You've got the two fillets, you've got the skin, and then you've got the bone itself. So there's quite a bit more there to cook than normal. Yeah. You see that skin is going to come off just like that. Yeah. And then I'm just finishing it with some micro basil. Nothing new, it's still the flavour that's through the dish. There we have it, T-bone of place with a sauce beige. That is nothing short of pure perfection for me. Look at that. Look, that's a thing of absolute beauty. If they can cook fish like that, we're going to be very, very happy. We'd be very happy. Let's see what they can do. First up is Mark, a 29-year-old sous chef who has spent 18 months working in Michelin-starred kitchens. Fine dining is probably my favourite to do, doing the delicate stuff. I may have the sausage fingers. So sometimes it's pretty hard to plate up the food, but I do like a challenge. Cooking for Marcus and Monica is going to be tough. 
they are two of the top chefs in the UK right now. Criticism, you have to take it in this trade anyway. Not everyone's going to like your food, but off them, I think I'll take it a lot more. I'll probably learn something off them, which will be fantastic. If I could teach them something, that'd be even better. Mark, welcome to Professional MasterChef. This is the skills test. This one was set by Monica. You will have 15 minutes to give us a T-bone or place and to serve a garnish that you like with a sauce verge. OK, thank you very much. How does that sound to you? It's been a while since I T-boned a fish, to be honest. It's but you have done it before? Years ago at college. Right. So uh, we'll see how I get on. 15 minutes. Go on, chef. Let's do this now. Five minutes have gone, Mark. Got another ten left. What are you thinking with this sauce version? Herbs, capers, shallot oil, grounding it all down together and then making it into a sort of consistency with a lot, little bit more oil than everything else. You've got five minutes left. Mark, you happy with the, your T-bone of um, place now? As happy as I can be, to be honest. T-bone, the bone through the centre, similar to a T-bone steak. So uh, that's why I've cut it into this. Mark, you've got 30 seconds, so get it on a plate, please. We've got a sauce as well here. All done? Uh, yeah, yes, sure. sir. It's not a T-bone, uh, and it's not a sauce veg, OK? Where you've gone wrong is you've just given us a, a whole fillet on the bone. Sauce verge is tomatoes, basil, lemon, and yes. olive oil. Looking at this fish, the bloodline is, is in there. You've got the roe still inside it as well. Yep. These are things that you shouldn't do, and you know that. So yes, that, for me, is disappointing. As you can see, Mark, I've just filleted the fish, and yep. it's raw. Yes, sure. That end's cooked, because that's the thin end, but that's not cooked at all. Mark, have you tasted that sauce? Yeah, sure. What are you thinking? Probably slightly over. Slightly over? Yeah. That's an understatement. There's far too much salt in that. That shouldn't even be on the plate. You're obviously disappointed. Very. I don't know who's more disappointed, you or us. Not a good start. Put this behind you. Make sure you come out all guns blazing in the next round. Mark, thank you very much. Off you go. You. Well, I know I hope he can pick himself back up again because he looks completely deflated now. And so he should be. That's probably the, one of the worst things I've ever sent to anyone. I'm disappointing myself so much right now. Next is head chef Mehdi, originally from France, now living in Yorkshire. It's a quite big deli, you know, very modern. We try to work English food, French food, continental, anything with just a twist. And the way we like, really, without rules, we're just having fun. I'm going to Master Chef. I just, you know, you're watching the TV, you talk with the friends, and they say, you can do better. I was thinking, why not go for it this year, you know? A great experience and something new to just Make the life more, more sparkly, I will say. Mehdi, I would like you to cook us a T-bone of place, serve it with a sauce verge and a garnish of your choice, using the ingredients on the table. How does that sound to you? Fun. Fun? <laughs> Good. Know. Right. Mehdi, 15 minutes. Off you go.
Mehdi, what's your plan of action with this? My plan of action is to keep it like that on the bones, grill it and serve it as a whole in the plate with a garnish. You've had five minutes, Chef. Ten minutes to go. Can I ask you... Yes? ..how long you think that fish will take to cook? Uh, hopefully ten minutes. <laughs> <laughs> I'm thinking like a raw sauce with olive oil, chopped shallot, lemon zest, chopped tomatoes, you know. Two and a half minutes left. Is that cooked, Smeddy? I would like to leave it a bit longer, but I think I will be good, yeah. All done? All done. Mehdi, you've left the fish whole, which, you know, then means it's going to take much longer for you to cook. Ideally, the best way to get the T-bone is to cut up the middle of the fish. So then, in fact, you've got the bone running down one yeah, side and, and across. Through all the way. Sauce veg, you've used the tomatoes, basil, lemon juice and olive oil, and you've added shallots, that's fine. You've pretty much got everything there. The fish beautifully falls off the bone, so it's, it's nicely cooked. It's just got a really bad presentation because it's stuck to your pan. But, you know, if you close your eyes, you've got some beautiful soft fish in your mouth, you've got some beautifully seasoned spinach, and you've got a very sort of pleasant sauce. Maybe the, the fish is cooked well. It, it's slightly under-seasoned for me. The, the sauce is very strong in the shallot, but you've got the, the makings of, of a good sauce version there. Tell you what, at this stage, with nerves the way they are, it's not a bad start at all. Mehdi, thank you very much. At the end of it, I'm pleased with the technique, you know, I'm just not happy with the result of the plate. The last to take on Monica's skills test is development chef Matt who's been working in kitchens since he was 15. My parents never had any money, and I wanted money to do things. So I started washing up, and then I started peeling potatoes and chopping parsley, the, the sort of commie jobs, and really, really enjoyed it, and sort of grabbed hold of it and carried on running from there, really. The reason I ended up MasterChef was my wife said, I'm overcritical of people. She said, well, go on then. Uh, Protein the pudding, if you think you're better than them, have a go. So here I am. Forgive me, you look mildly perplexed. I've never done a T-bone in a place before. Matt, think about a T-bone, what that sort of looks like, and hopefully yeah. that will guide you. If not, you've cooked fish before, Chef. Give us the best place that you've ever cooked before. Right. 15 minutes. Off you go. Right. So, Matt, what else is going into your sauce veg? I'm going to put some lemon zest in it and then a bit more olive oil and a bit of lemon juice at the end and some capers to finish. That's it? Yes. Yeah. You've had five minutes, Matt. Five minutes left, Matt. OK, no worries. It's 
So, mm. as a development chef, how's this dish developing? It looks all right. I've just got to make sure that that's cooked well. You've got three minutes. I don't think I've ever worked with a more awkward pan. Right, Matt, you've got a minute, and right. then we need this stuff on the plate. Done. This is not a tea bone. Um, this is not a sauce badge. But what you've done is actually very neat and, and very precise, which was good to see. It looks like you've cooked the fish very well and it's a, a neat and tidy plate of food. OK. That tastes good. I, li I like the fish, I like the seasoning. Love the strength of the basil. Uh, hate the crunch of raw shallots. Okay. I hate it. hate it. The fish is, is cooked wonderfully. You can see it's just fallen off the bone. It's seasoned really well. A sauce veg. I like the sharpness of the lemon juice coming through, and then lots of basil as evidence. You know, that sauce veg needs a lot of basil in it. Um, what it doesn't need is loads of shallots in it, Matt. OK? Yeah. What this tells me is, Matt, you can cook. And hopefully the next round, we're going to see the real, real you. I found it really nerve-wracking, but I'd like to think that I managed it OK. I'm quietly confident now. I'm still really nervous, but I think next time... Well, hopefully, I can keep more prayers off them. We'll just have to see. Monica, we've seen the chefs have a go at your skills test. Marcus, your turn. What are you going to get them to make? A wild garlic velouté garnished with some little baby vegetables and a parmesan crisp. What is a velouté? A velouté is a soup or a sauce that is just like velvet, beautiful and smooth. The skill is vegetable cookery, soup making and presentation. Delicate touch. It is a delicate touch. And bit out of squeeze, flavour out of everything. Can I begin? Yeah, go on, off you go, <laughs> chef. <laughs> Thank you. So the first thing we're going to do is we're going to start off with our vegetable prep. I'd like them to use a little bit of all of these different vegetables. I want to see how they cook them and how they're going to present them. And all I want to do is just trim them down slightly to take off any of the, the bits we don't want. The level of care and, and respect and how they prepare these vegetables is going to speak volumes about what experience these chefs have. Now I'm going to move on to the wild garlic velouté. I've got my chicken stock reduced with a touch of salt and I'm going to put the garlic leaves into there and just let that cook down. You don't see a lot of wild garlic in the supermarkets, but like that, is now a regular in restaurant kitchen. It is, but even if, if our chefs have not seen any of the ingredients in here, familiarise themselves, you know, I want to see them tasting. You've got a little splash of cream just to give it some richness. As you can see, the wild garlic has started to just come down now. Now you just want to make sure that it's completely cooked. If it's not cooked, when it goes into the blender, it will be a little bit bitty and you want it to come together just to be nice and smooth. I'm going to take some parmesan. I'm going to make a little twill. And this is just a little garnish to go on top. And I'm going to put that into the oven at 180 degrees. OK, so that's the rest of my garnish ready to go. My soup's ready to blend. Beautiful. We can now start to put our plate together. And then what we do is we're just going to pour the soup into the plate. Splendid. And there we have it. A wild garlic velouté with spring vegetables and a parmesan twill. I love everything about this dish. But the vegetables, they've just been cooked mm. beautifully. I can't wait to see mm. if our chefs can get that balance right. Yeah. Let's get them in. 
First up is 24-year-old head chef James from Cornwall. I was lucky that my dad was a chef, so from a young age I was in the kitchen, uh, after school, before school, and watching him cook at home, watching my mum cook, my grandma was a pastry chef, so a very foody family. Being a chef in the southwest is fantastic. In our afternoons we nip over onto the river, get our own sea vegetables, up through the forest, picking our own wild garlic and things like that. Everything is just there. I'm quite a competitive guy. I like to win, working 110% as hard as you can, ready to, well, go as far as I can. James, I'd like you to make us a wild garlic velouté, serve it with some baby vegetables and a parmesan twill. Wait. I'm going to give you 15 minutes to do this dish. Yeah, cool. Why'd you look so surprised? <laughs> no, ready. Yeah, I'm ready. You ready? Yeah. Wait. Off you go. James, have you made a wild garlic velouté or any velouté before? I made an asparagus velouté recently. How did that turn out? Yeah, really yummy. Really, really yummy. What's your plan with the soup, James? Uh, so I've blanched off my wild garlic. Blanched your wild garlic? Yeah. So it's cold? It's been in ice water? Yes, to keep the colour, to maintain the colour. I'm just going to bring some cream up, reduce it a little bit and add that to blitz it to right. it together. You've got just five minutes left. I think you're going to have to get a shift on. Two and a half minutes left. Finished? Uh, yes. I think your presentation is all underneath that very large twill. And it's a shame because you've got a great colour in your soup and then you plonk a big twill on it. That's probably the most tasteless plate of food I've tasted. I can't taste any garlic, the vegetables are too crunchy. The reason why that is just a liquid that's just a taste of water is because your garlic leaf wasn't cooked. So when you come to puree it, it doesn't come together as one. The velouté is not a velouté. This is wishy-washy water with a hint of wild garlic. It's a long way from where it should be, James. And I know when you go back through that door, you will kick yourself. Guaranteed. However badly you think you've done, <laughs> you're only one nil down and it's half-time. Off you go, Chef. Thanks very so much. Not great. No, rabbit in headlights. Mm. And I think we've got a bit more to come from him. That was horrible. Just had an absolute shocker. Like, couldn't have gone any worse, really. <laughs> Next in is 22-year-old sous chef Vanessa from Darlington. I love being a chef because it's my passion and it's what I like and enjoy doing. I'm looking forward to meeting Monica Galetti because she's my hero and somebody who inspired me. I think I could impress her. Well, I hope I could, and that's me aim to try and impress her. Service! It's a once-in-a-lifetime opportunity to be a master chef, so I'm really excited. Nessa, welcome. I would like you to make us a wild garlic velouté. We're going to serve it with baby vegetables with a parmesan twill. 15 minutes to do this dish.
you worked a wild garlic before? First time. You've had five minutes, Nessa. Nessa, are you confident about this? As confident as I can be. I know what a Vulu is, yep. but I haven't done this type before. Nessa, two minutes left. Done? Yeah. What we have here is, is a reduction of cream, hint of garlic. We gave you a bowl of wild garlic for a reason. It wasn't to decorate the bench. We wanted you to use it. It's almost the texture of a dessert, but it's savoury. It's not good, it's not what we were looking for. And I hope you come back next time round on your signature dish. All guns blazing. There's obviously a bit of an experience here with you. There's, there's obviously gaps in your knowledge. Nessa, thank you. Let's see what she can do with her signature dish and just let's hope it's a lot, lot better than that. That was not good. <laughs> to be fair, I haven't really made a veluta before. I've only ever made a fish one, but it wasn't exactly like that. I'm definitely still in the game. I'm going to put a lot of effort into this next round and give them my best dish. The final chef to face Marcus's skills test is head chef Kevin from Aberdeen. I've been a chef for 20 years. It's long hours, but you get great rewards, great sense of satisfaction. I think there's nothing worse being in a job that you're working 15, 16 hours a day if, if you don't enjoy it. I think the reason I applied to MasterChef was to prove something to myself, that I can maybe try and cut the mustard with, with some of the big guys. I'm going to try my best every round. Obviously, I'm going to try and get to the final. I think that's everyone's aim, because at the end of the day, why would you enter? 15 minutes, off you go. So talk to me about your velouté. What's the plan? Well, I'm just going to reduce the stock a little bit. Just yeah. Some flavour, and then I'm going to yep. get the boiled garlic in. Yep. Have you worked with wild garlic before? Yes. Yeah, I've used quite a little bit. Shake your hands. Well, I think you're doing okay, so don't get so nervous. I hope so. Once we get these nerves out of the way, we'll be just some cooking. Kevin, okay, you're halfway, so you've got okay. seven and a half minutes left. You've got three and a half minutes to finish this velouté, cook your veg and make a twill. So, yeah. Kevin, how are we looking? Soup's on, the leeks are here, fennel's here. Just wait in two or three minutes and we'll be there. Why are you reducing the velouté? Just to get some flavour into it. Flavour. 
Just like this end. Kevin, you've got 90 seconds. You've got to get in a bowl now. You're going to run out of time. Kevin, you're out of time, so stop. Stop, stop, stop. I like the way you've let me a little, little handle to stir it. That's really nice. You've got here, Kevin, a lightly garlicky flavoured liquid. It just doesn't taste cooked and there's zero velvetiness about it. Your garlic is sitting in that sieve over there yeah. when it should be actually in that plate. Kevin, it's not right, you know yeah. it. But, you know, watching some of the process that you work, I think there is definitely more to you and you have another chance to prove that. Kevin, thank you. Off you go, Chef. Thanks. Thank you. Thank you. He can do better than that. He knows that. We know it. Yeah. We need to see it in the next round. A bit deflated, to be honest. Definitely try and step it up for the next round. I have to, or I'm beginning up the road. Very nervy skills test, wasn't it? We didn't get one T-bone place and I didn't get one velute. No. Are you optimistic about the next round? Yes, it's about them in the next round. We're not giving them the test, they're bringing themselves to us. I think we need a couple of these chefs to come out of themselves and get over this challenge and come back fighting. That's all we really need. I'm desperate for them to do really well in the next round. I've had nothing to eat. <laughs> I had hardly any fish and no velute. I'm starving. Welcome back, chefs. I hope you've left the nerves in the last round. This is all about your cooking, your dish. It should speak volumes about who you are. At the end of this, we will be losing three of you. We haven't eaten a lot so far today, no. uh, and we are a little hungry. We would like some fantastic food from all of you. 90 minutes to prepare and cook your signature dish. One dish, the dish that needs to get you into the quarterfinal. Off you go. I think there's probably a lot more pressure on this now that I need to nail it. I'm hoping they see this dish and there's a smile on at least one of their faces that, yes, you can actually cook and I'm not just there for the ride. What's the title of your signature dish? Honey and fennel roasted duck breast with hay baked carrot and anise carrot puree. What does that hay bring to the humble carrot? I've blowtorched it for the sous vide breast, so hopefully it takes on some of that flavour, and I'm going to salt bake the baby carrots with the burned hay. You've got the look of a fighter now. I am, I am a fighter. You have to in the kitchen, you have to fight. If something goes down, you have to get back up and just go for it. So that's what I'm going to try and do today. Good spirit. Great spirit. Look forward to it. He's chosen to cook the duck on sous vide with the hay inside and some butter. This is all about the execution. He's got to get that duck cut beautifully well. I want to see the fat rendered down. I want the flavour of the hay to come through because it's in the dish. Mark is also cooking us heritage carrots that he's going to put into a salt crust that's also going to have hay inside. That could be fabulous. The judges will see me at the worst today, but hopefully they'll see me at the best in the signature round. Yeah, I'm very excited to cook my own dish. Just can't wait, really. What's your signature dish, Nessa? So I'm doing lamb rump with truffle salted mash, uh, butternut squash puree, buttered baby carrots and red wine and rosemary jus. Why this dish here now? I want to show you that I can cook, so, like, pull something out the bag for you. Good girl. Nessa, lamb. I'm a big lamb fan. Good luck. Thank you. 
Vanessa is serving her lamb dish with a butternut squash puree. She's got truffle puree to go in there as well. I want to see Nessa do well today. She's got a point to prove. The lamb has to be cooked perfectly well. You want the pom puree to be nice and truffly, nice and creamy and rich. It's got to be right. 20 minutes have gone. You've got an hour and 10. It was the worst start I could have asked for, really. But luckily, there is a, another challenge to try and bring it back. I'm hoping there's a few techniques and textures that are a little bit different. What's the dish, James? Uh, so I've got uh, pork tenderloin, glazed pork, pork cheek, uh, pig stick. Hang on, hang on. Whoa, whoa, whoa. Sorry. Sorry. An airbag? Airbag is, yeah, the dehydrated pork skin. What's a pig stick? Pork cracking. <laughs> Um, squid ink, two texture apple sauce, and hopefully a smoked haddock croquette. You've got 90 minutes, not 90 days. Yeah, I know, yeah. Now, hopefully it will all come together, though. Is this on the menu at the place you work? Uh, yes, yeah, but without the croquette at the moment. A new element is the smoked haddock croquette. Yeah. That is a new element for me, too, in a pork dish. James's pork dish is a dish that's got quite a lot of confusion in it for me. I do not understand where the haddock and cheese croquette come into the equation. He's going to be putting a squid ink onto the plate for a point of decoration. He's got pork three different ways, a stewed apple and, a, and an apple puree. Also, it's got green food colouring in it. There's a lot going on here. James has got a point to prove. I just hope he's not trying too hard to impress us here today. You're halfway. It means you have 45 minutes left. After the skill test, when I stand in the competition, uh, it's hard to know, you know. Going forward, I think what I need to do now is just make some better presentation and also just flavor, show some flavor. That would make me go through, hopefully. Mehdi? Yeah? What are you cooking for us today? Uh, I'm going to cook a bavet with uh, a selection of veg. I call it the garden on the plate. Bavet's a beef with garden on the plate. Yeah. This dish, is it you? Me, yes, it is. You know, it's very French, very south of France, I would say, with the veg I use. Nothing very complicated, but hopefully it will taste very good. Good luck, Mehdi. Mehdi, thank Thanks you. a lot. The most important thing about the bavet is got to make sure that it's lovely and tender. The water bath is going to tenderize this meat, so I really hope that Mehdi checks it before he puts it into the pan. He's got beef, salsify, asparagus in there. He's making a barrigo artichoke as well, a red wine sauce. They're all ingredients that should work together. You know, in the right hands, this could be wonderful. 20 minutes left. Guys, move it, move it. Don't let the time run away with you. 20 minutes. For the next round, I just need to smash it and, and do it right. I've practiced it a couple of times after service, and the timing seems to be fine. Just getting this, each element needs to be just bang on. What are you making, Kevin? So I'm going to do a squab pigeon. I'm going to use all the birds. I'm going to use the breast. I'm going to sous vide it on the crown. I've used the heart, the liver, pressure cook the legs, and I'm going to crisp them up with little breadcrumbs and sell out with a little truffle emulsion and a little barley risotto. Very Scottish. Yeah, I had to put some Scottish. Kevin, why are you here? What have you got to prove? I know that I can cook. I can lead a brigade to cook, but it's just something for me this time. And that's what I want to do. Are you putting yourself under a bit of pressure here coming up? A bit, yeah. But why not? I know. Why not? I do like the fact that Kevin is using all of the pigeon. He's putting the breast into a water bath, he's cooking them on the crown, and then he's going to roast them and finish them in the pan. He's using the legs. He's using the carcass to make the sauce, and I really do like the fact he's using the innards as part of his dish. Chefs, you have 10 minutes left. I think everything's resting on this next one. I wouldn't want to rest on my laurels. As good as feedback as I got, I didn't hit the brief, so I've got to get this right to be in with a chance of not being sent home. The dish is uh, duck breast with uh, celeriac puree, savoy cabbage and lardons, and uh, black pudding and prune bonbon. So you've got the sweet, fruity, smooth, gamey flavour from the duck, and then the sort of crunch and salty texture from the, 
the way you talk about your ingredients, your food, you talk with passion. Absolutely. You sound like you, you know this dish inside out. Yeah, I do. I know this dish inside out. Are you pushing yourself hard enough, is the question. I think I might have played it a little bit safe, but the, the flavours in the dish speak for themselves. Sounds great. I can't wait. Thank you. I really like the sound of Matt's dish. It sounds like to me a chef that understands balance, different flavours, different textures, different techniques, and I really love the way Matt talks about his dish. I just hope that he can pull it off on the plate. Matt's got to get the cooking off this duck right. I'd like to have that skin lovely and crispy. I want to see great cooking and everything has got to be perfect. Three minutes. Come on, come on. Kevin, you run out of time in the last round, mate. Come on. You've got 90 seconds. Come on, come on, come on. Sixty seconds. If you don't go on a plate in a minute, it's not going on at all. That's it. Time's up. Kevin, would you bring your plate up, please? Aberdeen-based head chef Kevin has prepared squab pigeon three ways. Sous vide breast, offal faggots, and panko-coated legs in a truffle mascarpone and parmesan emulsion. Served with a pearl barley risotto, celeriac puree, asparagus, salsify, and a pigeon reduction. Kevin, the plate has been plated very neatly. However, the eye is drawn to the amount of blood that's seeped all over the plate. It's not appealing. Yeah. I love what you've done to the bird. I love the breasts like that. I absolutely love those legs that are crispy. And taking the innards and, and making those little faggots, I think is divine. The flavour in there is absolutely superb. I think the pigeon, for, for me, is how I would like it. For some people, you know, it might be a bit under. It's a shame there's no crispy skin to go mm. with it. The pearl barley risotto for me is a bit wet, but I think the, the actual pearl barley is nicely cooked. Overall, some great ideas on here, Kevin. I actually really like this dish a lot. I love the combinations. I love the cooking of the pigeon. The espuma, a little bit on the salty side for my liking. Maybe that was the cheese that you used. But I love the idea that you've utilised every little bit about this pigeon in every way, and I respect that. Mehdi, please, bring your food up. Mehdi's bavet of beef is served with a purple potato puree, bolete mushroom, asparagus, leeks, salsify, carrots, artichoke barragool, and a red wine sauce. This dish is not what I was expecting from you today. The whole thing seems so disjointed of individual things that do not come together at all. And that potato, like that, so bright, so vibrant, I almost think I need to wear sunglasses to eat this dish. Doesn't work for me, Mehdi. Unfortunately, I'm sorry. I think you've cooked the vegetables OK. I particularly like the salsify. I like that. I'm getting a bit of butteriness from it, and it's nutty. I don't see how asparagus and artichoke and mushroom goes with the beef. You know, the flank of the, the beef, I, I like the way it's cooked. I don't think there's any seasoning in it at all. There's just nothing there that makes this lovely piece of meat stand out. I 
am quite disappointed with what we have here, uh, Mehdi. I'm frustrated, yes I am. You know, you want to show your best and you just don't want to, to end up like that way, you know. James's dish is pork tenderloin. Pig cheeks with a maple syrup and yeast extract glaze. Crackling and dehydrated pork skin. Served with apple sauce, an apple gel, a smoked haddock and cheese croquette, squid ink, and a five spice pork choux. James, this is a real classic example of a dish that's been way overthought. I don't personally know where you're going with it, uh, and I don't know what it's supposed to be. This croquette here, this shouldn't be anywhere near this plate. Don't know why that's there. Less is more when it's done very, very well. And there's nothing on this plate for me that's done very, very well. I like the cooking of the pork. I love the idea of the two apples, one sweet and the other one slightly sharper. Really like that. As much as I love your smoked fish croquette, in my opinion, it has no place at all on a pork dish. The pork cheeks, for me, I love the glaze. They're just a few minutes off, so it should almost be melting when you eat it. The crispy sticks as well, a really nice touch. The squid ink, for the sake of having colour on the plate, comes with experience, you learn you either go without it or you find something that actually makes sense on the plate. Okay, style over substance, this is fun, but we want the substance, we want the chef underneath all that style. I think I've, I've cooked to the best of my ability, so hopefully I've done enough to get to the competition. Vanessa's oven-roasted lamb rump is served with truffle salted mash, buttered carrots, curly kale, a butternut squash puree, finished with a rosemary and red wine lamb jus. I like your presentation. I like the way you've cooked the lamb. Your mashed potato is incredibly smooth. Your sauce is, is wrong. It's really strong, really salty. What I'd like to see is more of the sweet things, more of the butternut squash and more of the carrot. Lamb goes with a lamb sauce with an essence of rosemary, an essence of mint. This sauce is too big, it's too bold, and lamb should never be smothered with a sauce so strong. I love the butternut squash puree. The mashed potato is very smooth but there's a lot of truffle potato to eat with a very delicate meat like lamb. I think the dish is, is slightly out of balance. It's sort of out of, it's not quite right in, in a few areas, but you know, good effort, Nessa, good effort. Thank you. I'm quite proud of how far I've got and that I've actually made it onto MasterChef, but I don't think I've done enough to stay in a competition. Next is Matt with his duck breast, served with celeriac puree, savoy cabbage and pancetta lardons, a black pudding and prune bonbon, and a chicken reduction. I was quite surprised when I saw the presentation of your dish and the sort of rusticness of the style. I thought you'd be uh, more modern. But having said that, I think the balance of the dish, the flavour of the duck, the sauce, the, the balance of the prune with the black pudding is right. I like this dish. There's flavour bursting out of that plate, Chef. Your duck is just really soft and it's just, it literally is melting on my tongue. The butter in that puree is unbelievable. I just expected a little bit more sophistication in the look of your plate. Okay. It shows to me that you're a very competent chef. Uh, the understanding of the cooking of the duck, the, the right crispiness, 
on the skin. For me, the cooking is perfect. It's how I, I would eat it. What I want from you is the wow factor. Really happy, really happy. There's a few negatives, but overall it was very positive. They all really liked it, and that's just amazing for me. Mark, please come up. Mark has cooked his duck breast with a fennel Szechuan pepper and honey glaze, a carrot and anise puree, Jersey Royal mashed potato, hay and salt crust baked heritage carrots, served with a port, red wine and orange jus. Mark, nice presentation. I like the way the duck's being cooked and the spice that's coming through. Kind of disappointing that I don't get this hay that was there, the smokiness. If you're going to bring something to the dish, make sure it's there for a reason. The dish packs power, it packs flavour. I think the duck is nicely cooked. Uh, you've got a little bit of caramelisation going on at the tops, which is really nice. You've got a good balance of flavours here. I absolutely adore your soft, beautifully cooked duck with that sauce that is both sweet and slightly sharp almost like an Asian duck a l'orange. However, the mashed potato in a sweet sauce is a little bit odd for me. A salty carrot in there is a little bit odd for me. Quite a lot to admire about that dish, mate. Thank you. Thanks, Mark. Feeling a lot better, especially after the first challenge. I uh, absolutely went down like the Titanic. I think uh, I've brought it back in this, I got some good comments, so I'm happy. I think we had a slightly disappointing skills test. However, there is obviously some talented chefs in this bunch. There's not been a standout star overall, but that's OK, because they will develop even more as, as the competition grows. But there are definitely two chefs that I think are already out of their league in the competition. One of the chefs that needs to go is Nessa. That was a horrible skills test. We had a bowl of cream. Mm. And although I think she bounced back brilliantly and showed a great deal of resilience, I don't think Nessa right now is ready for, for professional mastership. I hope that she can take this experience and, and build on it, because I think that is the most important part. Mehdi really disappointed me. I've no idea what he presented us here with a signature dish. Individual ingredients not working together in harmony on the plate, and the beef just looked like a little side order on the side. Now we've got the remaining four. We've got Kevin. James, Mark, and Matt. Now, there seems to be one chef here that we, all three of us, seem to like, and that's Matt. Matt, for me, did good. You know, we expected, you know, the wow factor, but that he can bring. If he can cook great already, you know, those are the flourishes that's just going to finish uh, a plate, and I think that can be picked up. Matt has uh, great potential. I think his food ideas are very good. I just thought there would be a little bit more style to the plate. I can't deny the flavours and the textures that that chef put on a plate. If I was sent home this early on in the first round, I don't think I'd be able to live it down. But no risk, no reward. Kevin's dish in the kitchen today was the one that had the biggest potential. I think the ingredient combination, the idea uh, and various points of execution were very, very good. Not without fault, but I really did like the way that he cooked and prepared his pigeon. I'd be disappointed going home today, but, you know, it's, the mistakes are mine, they're no one else's. I'm just going to ask, right, I'm just going to light the touch paper and then I'm going to run and hide, OK? Because I quite like James. Are you waiting to wave goodbye to him? James, for me, scares me. Uh, I, I think there's no point of when to stop on the dish. There are things on the plate that just don't need to be there. What we're looking for right now is just really good, straightforward, harmonious cookery. Well, he's ambitious. He wouldn't be the first young chef to come in here and attempt too much. My fear is, you know, how many times are we going to have to pull him back and, and, and rein him in, and will he take it on board? I'd be gutted to go at this stage, but fingers crossed, like, yeah. Mark, with the duck. I think there was nice creative touches on his dish. I like the flavours, I like the idea. I think there's something in there that we sort of think we all like about him. 
I was a bit disappointed the hay was a non-event. You know, it was there, but it didn't really add anything extra. I liked where he was going with it. It was just a shame it didn't sort of carry through. Originally it was, I just want to get on it, but now I've got here, I've, now I've done the dish, I really want to get through the next round. We can't take all four. We can take three from the four. Who's it going to be? I think I know who I'd like to put through. Do you? I definitely know which two chefs should go through. Well done. Tough competition, professional master Very, very tough competition. We've made a decision. Three of you are staying with us. Three, unfortunately, are leaving us. The first contestant leaving the competition is... Nessa. Our second chef leaving the competition is... Mehdi. Our final chef leaving is... James. Thank you very much. It's been good. I've really enjoyed the competition. It's been a good experience. It was a thousand times harder than you can ever imagine it would be. I'm happy because I just tried something I always wanted to try. I did have fun to do it and I, I, I will laugh about it in the pub. I really enjoyed myself today. Being given the chance, what most people haven't had the chance to do, so it's really good. Chefs, congratulations. You're now quarter finalists. Well done. Well done, guys. Well done. You've had a taste of it now, so you know where your mistakes were, and hopefully you don't make them again. I'm really happy right now. So much harder than I actually thought it would ever be. Your head's got to be 100%. It's nothing like working in the kitchen day to day. I'm really, really nervous. I'm just, I'm just really happy I've got through that. I'm chuffed to bits right now. Next time, it's the quarter-final. And the chefs must once again prove themselves to Marcus and Monica. Is that an interesting face or an angry face? You'd be happy to get that in a restaurant. Only the best will get to cook for the critics. It's actually rather pleasant. Tracy, you're mad. <laughs>